What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Crazy Cycling Channel. So I finally got my hands on something I've always wanted, which is a Dutch city bike. I always had the dream of going to Amsterdam or the Netherlands, buying a bike there, bringing it back to the US, which hasn't happened yet, maybe one day in the future. Uh, but I've always been interested in having a Dutch city bike here in the US because these are the perfect bikes to just get on and ride no matter what you're wearing. They're not expensive. Um, you can use any clothes. Uh, it's got a really upright riding position. They're really practical. They can sit out in the rain and it won't really hurt them. Um, and I've just always wanted one, but they're actually pretty hard to find in the US. And when you do find them, they tend to be way overpriced. I've seen used ones go for like four or 500, which is probably about what a new one, uh, a, a budget new one costs in the Netherlands, maybe even on the high end. Um, of course, the prices go up depending on the features and stuff. If they have hub dynamos and gears and whatnot but this is a bog standard basic dutch city bike the brand is olandia and in this video i thought i would go through the bike and just talk about it very very briefly and then um, take a look at what i need to repair on this bike by the way i paid 65 dollars for this as is and the biggest problem right off the bat is the bottom bracket is seized so hopefully i can get it out of there um, if not, the bike is basically toast. Um, but if I can get it out of there, I should be able to replace that and make a pretty cool bike out of that. So let's take a look at the bike first and then see if I can get that bottom bracket out. Okay, so I figured I'd kind of show you some of the features of this bike. Of course, this is a steel frame, um, Olandia. I don't know uh, how old this bike is. I did briefly see that this is a classic Dutch brand, although this particular one is made in China manufactured by cycle force group made in china and it's got some american information there so maybe this one was originally sold in the u.s but my understanding is that that's pretty rare um got some safety information and whatnot an old bicycle permit but yeah steel bike here this is a step through design um it has a coaster brake at the rear which um is working and actually that's not surprising those are really reliable it has the side skirt here to protect um, you know if you're wearing flowy clothes it's also got the chain guard here this is the kickstand which that's pretty tight too can maybe get some oil on that but that is moving so that's how the kickstand works it has a rack but these racks aren't really good for panniers that you need uh, the kind that kind of goes over the top or um yeah they're not really like touring racks they're just like utility racks um a basic saddle this one has a front brake which i'm going to rip off of there and just not use this is um, the same kind of brake you find on really uh cheap uh like kids bikes or just older cheap bikes um really not very effective anyway so i'm going to get rid of that and just use a coaster brake the wheel size here is 700 c actually it's 28 inch which i always thought was 700c and then someone told me that it's different but actually it is the same so it has 27 sorry 700c tires so basically 700 is the same as a 28 inch uh, which is also the same as a 29 inch but a 27 inch is different and a 27 inch is actually bigger so really confusing there but uh, this does have 700c tires on it um, and the tires are in decent condition but they are kind of cracking a little bit and I happen to have these uh, Schwab Land Cruiser tires I've been trying to sell, but nobody wants them. Uh, they're really heavy, but super durable, and I'll probably put them on this bike instead. So what do I need to do here? Well, the main thing is see if the bottom bracket is seized. If I can get that out of there, get a new bottom bracket. Um, the pedals aren't great, so maybe I'll need to get new pedals. I'll measure the chain, and if I need to, I'll replace the chain. It's going to be a single speed chain which is what three is it three thirty seconds uh or eighth inch i i can't remember but whatever single speed chain is um we'll put the new tires on and you know i'll probably leave all the bearings as is but maybe you know the headset feels really good the wheel just spinning it feels really good but um if i feel like it i'll rebuild that but i'm planning on not putting too much into this and honestly just kind of leaving it out in the rain um you know the way this would be used in like Amsterdam um it has the old school battery light on there which I might leave that uh, and see if I can get it to work or maybe 
replace it. Ripping it off of there would just leave this metal piece unless I took the headset apart, which I don't really want to do. I'll check if the stem is seized. If it's seized, I'll just use it as is, but if not, obviously adjust that to height. This, of course, is a quill stem, but a really long one for that upright riding position. Uh, I don't like the grips. I just think they're really ugly, but um, I'm not sure if I can get something similar, so I'll take a look at grips in the future. And this saddle is also kind of old, and I happen to have this um, huge Cell Royale, um, you know, sort of upright saddle that is not really good for a lot, but it's probably perfect for this. So I'll probably put that onto here. And um, that's about it. I'm not going to worry about the rust too much. I'm not going to worry about the bearings too much. Um, just going to kind of get this thing functional. So in this video, I'm going to see if I can get the bottom bracket out. And then I'll do some future videos um, rebuilding this thing and riding it. Uh, so let's get right into it. Okay, so the first thing I want to do here is take off this clothing protector, chain protector. Uh, this particular kind um, has a little, uh, it's like a metal rod that holds this thing together. You kind of have to unclip it. There's a little rod here that zigzags around these clips. So let's pull that off of there. And yep, that'll just come apart. It's a snap here, but it's pretty rusted. Okay, there we go. Got the snap off. And now I'm actually not sure. Do I even need to get it off of there? Yes, I do. Yes, I do, because the crank sit here at the front is completely covered. Um, but I'm not quite sure how to go from here. I might need to take the wheel off. Okay, so it turns out there were two more snaps back here, and now the fabric, or vinyl, I guess, can kind of pull off. And I'm not going to worry about the back too much yet, although I'm going to have to eventually take the whole bike apart. Um, those snaps were really rusted, and I did, unfortunately, rip the vinyl a little bit there. Um, I'll just do my best with that. But I can't get this around the pedal, so I need to take the pedal off, which is going to be tricky and potentially impossible. But I figured I'd try. Let me get some gloves on because I have too much experience, you know, hitting my hands somewhere after trying to get, um, you know, a stiff uh, pedal off. Let's move the camera over that way. Okay. A bit more. And because the bottom bracket is seized, I can't rotate where the crank arms are. So I basically just need to... Oh, that was actually not at all seized. Okay. Well, that's good. That gives me hope for the bottom bracket. And by the way, I probably will replace these pedals as well because they are so... They are kind of rusty. The bearings aren't terrible. They're just a little stiff. But that depends if I have something else in stock here. I don't really want to spend money on new pedals. Or maybe I should just go with the... Yeah, that's just pretty stiff. I guess I could either dribble some oil into that, I could rebuild the pedals, I could replace them, I could leave them. I don't know, we'll see, maybe I'll rebuild them. Anyway, um, next thing is, let's see if I can gently, whoops, pull this final off. Is there another snap at the back? I think more disassembly needs to happen, but that's going to be good enough to get the cranks off, and then also the uh, bottom bracket out. While I'm here, let me measure the chain. I'll probably just replace it. Okay, let's get the chain checker in there. So honestly, not bad at all. So I'll keep the chain and actually just take this. Um, it's actually not worn out at all. It's, if you know about chains, less than 0.5. So in the spirit of reusing stuff, it actually almost measures brand new. Um, let's keep that chain. I'll just throw a lot of oil on that. But I do definitely need to take this crank off. There's that cap in there. Sometimes, oops. All right, this is a 14 millimeter wrench, I believe, or is it a 12 uh, or 15? I think it's a 14 or one of these um, uh, crank bolt tools. And that is not seized as well, which is another really good sign. 
Okay, there's quite a lot of rust on these threads, so I'm going to throw some oil on there. I'm going to use this Boo Shield T9 because that's the thickest oil I have, even though it's not very thick. A wet chain lube or some Pedro Sin lube or something is probably better. But just to kind of lubricate those threads, you can also blow that out with an air compressor if you have one. But I don't, so I'm just going to do that. And then uh, the crank puller, you always want to make sure you take the crank bolt off first. Otherwise, um, you'll either break your crank puller um, or uh, destroy the threads on your crank arm. Let's see if I can get this thing threaded into there without cross-threading it. This could be a little bit tricky. And worst comes to worst, the threads are not the same on these European bikes. Oh. Oh, they're not. Are they? Maybe they are. Uh, that is threading it, I think. So I'm very, very gently going to try and turn it in. Um, there may be some cranks that are threaded different to normal. I'm not really sure. But I think that's just rusty, so... It's just very gently. Because if you cross-thread this, you'll have a big problem. But that does seem to be threading into there. It's just a little bit stiff. And I'm pretty sure it's not cross-threaded. You want to crank this in as far as it will go, or once again, you'll destroy the threads on your crank arm. Okay, I think that's as tight as that's going to go. Uh, this is a steel crank arm, so there is actually less risk of destroying the threads. It didn't seem to, cr uh, to go on that far. Um, but usually I think your problem is going to be with aluminum, which is like what your modern crank arms are. So now, let's see if I can pull this off. I think that's already moving. It's either moving or it's broken. Nope. All right. Cool. That's one side. I'm going to do the exact same procedure on the other side of the bike. Okay, the left crank arm was actually way harder to get off than the right. It was... the threads were kind of messed up. I eventually just actually used a pick to kind of clean out the threads and that seemed to work and I was able to pull it off. Um, we'll see later if I damage those threads or not, but getting this off is the most important part because on you just use the crank bolt. So now we come to the next challenge, which is to see if the bottom bracket is seized. I also need to see if I have the right bottom bracket tools, but I believe I do. So I have one of these, uh, I don't know what this is called, but this is the kind of bottom bracket that uses uh, this sort of a shape tool and one of these. And this should be, I believe it's normal threaded. I think you unthread that to the left. So let's try. This is potential for injury here. <sighs> yeah, this is a little bit dangerous. <sighs> All right. In a minute here, wait, maybe it's, maybe it's right threaded. Maybe it's right threaded. I should probably Google it. <clears throat> Whatever it is, it's pretty stuck. The other side is gonna use uh, one of these things. And that one should definitely be, yeah, it should be threaded down that way. Okay, so to get the drive side out is definitely going to be in the direction of pedaling, which with the bike upside down means pulling. Also, this guard may be in the way after all. I can work around that. I suppose I could do that. Ooh, it's really in the way. Um, and the non-drive side, the inner nut should be the same. The lock ring, maybe the lock ring is the opposite. So let's assume the lock ring is opposite. Um, and that means I'm going to try getting it out that way. This is one of those things that I probably should Google it. But I'm just going to roll with it right now and see if I can do this without killing myself. Oh, hey, hey, that did actually move. Okay. Let's go again. I either moved or thought it moved. It 
This is really a two-person job. Okay, let's skip that for now. Let's bend that. I'll bend it back later. And let's try and get the drive side out. And that one is for sure going to be back. Okay. Pretty stuck. All right. Um, I'm approaching this a little bit with in a rush. I actually have an appointment in about an hour. So I'm going to soak this with the best thing I have, I think, is WD-40. So I'm going to soak with WD-40, leave it overnight, uh, take the guard off, and Google which direction that lock ring unwinds. And then tomorrow, or maybe tonight, try this again and see if I can get that body bracket out. This is possibly not doable, um, but all I can do is try. So I think before I hurt myself here, working on this in a rushed way, I'll take a break and approach this again tomorrow. Um, and yeah, we'll see what we do then. Okay guys, it's a couple days later and I did eventually get the bottom bracket out of there. I didn't film the whole process of taking it out because it was frustrating and I just kind of kept coming back and working at it. But I can tell you what I eventually did. So what I did is um, I, after the first day, I left it uh, with this guard taken off and I had kind of soaked the bottom bracket area with WD-40. I guess that's how that chain guard comes off. Um, my plan was actually to come back, take the whole bike apart and use a vise to hold the uh, bottom bracket cups and uh, use the whole bike as leverage. But I actually came back and tried it again with normal tools. And for the non-drive side, I actually got it out with this set of water pump pliers. Um, I had had the non-drive side cup was moving a little bit um, on the first day I tried this and I thought I'd give it another shot and actually it had pretty much loosened up. So um, it was still pretty hard. I had to put a lot of weight on it, but this worked and that's making me think I need to get a bigger set of these for jobs like this. These jaws from this Knipex water pump plier are really, really good at gripping. So they gripped onto that and I was able to just use a lot of leverage to get the non-drive side out. And when you do have the non-drive side out, there is a tool to get the drive side out that I don't have. It's basically um, a very beefy uh, threaded rod with a nut on it and some washers. And you turn it, uh, you put it through the hole in the bottom record cup, tighten the nut, and as the nut tightens, it tightens such that it will turn it in the direction to remove the cup. And because it's tightening, it also has a lot of friction. So it's able to grip onto that bottom bracket cup. I don't have one. So what I did is I actually took a punch and I, well, first of all, I soaked everything with WD-40 again. Then I hit, actually here's that, that other cup. So I, I hit this from the inside of the bottom bracket shell with a punch and a hammer pretty hard. Hit it from the outside a couple times. Tried my pliers wrench, that didn't work. But then I used the normal bottom bracket tool and I hit it with a hammer and that was enough to knock it loose. Um, so maybe I got lucky there. But anyway, this is loose. So let's take a look and then I'll show you how to measure, uh, measure this up for a new bottom bracket, which you probably know. But that's the whole purpose of this is to make sure I can get that unseized so that I can actually carry on with this bike restoration or bike build. Um, so let's take a look at the bottom bracket cup real quick. I'll just, I guess, grab this camera off of there so I do have this funny um, uh, shield here which is a little bit damaged but maybe I can still make that work quite a lot of rust built up inside that bottom bracket shell this would be a great candidate for re-threading the bottom bracket shell but I don't have that tool either uh, so maybe I'll get around to that at work maybe I'll just use a lot of grease clean this really well and um, you know um, tighten the bottom bracket in the other side's pretty much the same uh, you can probably see there, it's also kind of rusty, but the threads are actually in pretty good condition. So now the next step is to actually measure the bottom bracket shell as well as the spindle length to get a replacement bottom bracket. So to do that, I like using a set of calipers. 
This is probably a 68 millimeter. They're all 68 except for some mountain bike bottom brackets, but just to be sure, see what that reads as. <laughs> it's right around 70. Um, it's about 69, so I think that is going to be a 68, unless this is a weird, not um, British thread bottom bracket, but I think even these Dutch bikes use British bottom bracket threads. So I'm going to assume it's a 68. And then I got to measure the spindle, which is laying over here. Let's see if I can see my screen first of all. Well, I can't, but see if I can measure that one handed. And then we'll have to round up. So let's see here what that comes out to be. That'll be about a, you can see how I'm measuring here, not to the end of the threads, but to the end of the spindle. It's a pretty long one. It's about a one, it's a 126, I think it's measuring. There is a 127 size, I think. So what I'm gonna order is I'm gonna order a 68 by 127 English threaded bottom bracket, and then we'll carry on with this bike um, restoration. And no, the seat post isn't seized. I don't know yet about the handlebars, but even if they're seized, it doesn't matter. The position is fine. Um, so yeah, I think we're gonna do a video or two on uh, fixing up this Olandia Dutch bike. So pretty exciting, I got that thing out of there. Um, hope you enjoyed that little edit. Um, thanks as always for watching, take care, and I'll see you next video.